Hello and welcome to another video. Today I am bringing you my May wrap up and I just want to say I'm really happy with how May went. Um, so in May I was partly taking part in um, Eurovisionathon, which went from the 24th of April to the 22nd of May, um, which I only read a few of the books during the end of April and the rest will and that was all on my April wrap up and the rest that I read are on this one and then from the 23rd to the 29th of May I took part in my read at mine and lives readathon which was the Royal Readathon of Royal Celebration um which I had eight books on my TBR for I am really happy to report all together in the month of May I read 22 books which means I've officially beaten my record because before May, the most I had read in a month was 21 books, which I know it's only one extra, but that's still one extra. Um, and in total, my page count was 8,279 pages, which is, uh -huh, no words. I did DNF two books. So during Eurovisionathon, I DNF'd Pietra the Latvian by Georges Semenon. Um, I was, it's a very short book. It was only 158 pages, I think. Um, but I got 44 pages in and was just not enjoying it. I'm not a massive fan of like crime books anyway, but this was just... I wasn't clicking with it and I didn't want to risk putting myself in a slump with how many books were on my Eurovisionathon TBR. So I DNF'd it, put it to the side and that was it, it was done. But I gave it a go and yeah, I just wasn't wasn't feeling it. And then during Royal Readathon week, I did DNF The Air by Kira Cass. I got 141 pages into this and I just couldn't do it anymore. I really did not like how the main character was being manipulated and guilt tripped into doing something she did not want and I just felt like the plot of the story was her going to be miraculously changing her mind and wanting the whole marriage and romance thing and I just quite frankly was not here for it at all so I just DNF'd it which is a shame because this is the technically the fourth book in the selection series um so I will not be continuing and reading the fifth book obviously because I didn't finish this one um, but I do still hold the original trilogy very dear to me and the original trilogy as far as I'm concerned is where it ends so yeah. So then on to the books that I actually did complete. So first up I read Snippets of Serbia by MF Fick. This was a I think it was like 197 pages or something and it was a very beautiful book um this came out as a four star um i would have liked a little bit more text on it because it is an illustration um of emma fix experiences in serbia and it was really lovely seeing the different things and there was like little recipes in there for different serbian foods and it was just so lovely and it's made me really want to visit there it just seems like such a lovely beautiful place to visit and but yeah, it literally the only reason it got a full star was because I would have just liked a little bit more text. Um, but the illustrations were actually absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, I would definitely recommend this. I don't often read nonfiction either, which is like, so that's like quite a big deal for me. Um, but yeah, I really liked this. Next up, I read The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This came out as a three star. I did actually read, a, like listened along with the audiobook and I think that helped boost the rating a little bit. I think it might have been a high two star if I had just physically read the whole thing. Um, but I definitely feel like this is one that I would prefer the film of. I've only seen the film once. Um, but I did really enjoy the film and I do want to refresh my memory now that I've read the book but um it was very dark and I think that's another reason that it did get three star because I was really invested in the darkness of Dorian Gray I really liked it and yeah next up we have Comet in Moominland by Tovey Jansen I this is technically the second book in the Moomins 
and I really liked this. This was a very, very quick read. This was a three star, um, but there's just really cute illustrations of Moomins. And I'm so glad after all these years, I'm finally reading the Moomin books. Um, but yeah, I really love Moomin's, like Moomin Trolls adventures and the friends he makes. And it's just such a cute little kid story and it's one that I would definitely recommend reading with kids or two kids. It's just so lovely and I wish I'd read these growing up, but I didn't. I did watch a TV show, I vaguely remember. Um, but yeah, this is the first time I got to the book, so I'm finally getting to them, which I'm very happy about. Next up, we have Ali and Nino by Kerban Saeed. This was also a three star. However, this was a bit of a shock for me. I did not expect to like this because it is a very Romeo and Juliet style story in the sense that um, Ali is from Azerbaijan and Nino is from Georgia. And at the time it's set, um, it wasn't, it was, it was a little bit frowned upon for you to mingle essentially. Um, but they fell in love and they had to go through a lot of rubbish. Um, but it was a beautiful story and it doesn't end the way that Romeo and Juliet ends. However, it is a really heartbreaking ending. Um, and yeah, it, it really shocked me just how much I did like it. And it did only get a three star, but I genuinely thought this would be a DNF or a very, very, very low rating. So it was a nice um, surprise reading it. Next up, we have What Magic Is This by Holly Bourne. This is, I think, only the second Holly Bourne book to ever get less than a five star. This was a four star. And to be honest, the only reason it didn't get five is because it is only a short little story. It's not like got much plot to it. It all takes part in the space of like one night. Um, but it's like three friends and the friendship in this was lovely and it was just it was just a nice little read and i really enjoyed it um the the main theme of this is female friendships so that was a nice little touch next up we had my my reread of wind witch by susan dennard this is the second book in the witchland series obviously i'm reading it for witchlands long and this was april's book that I got to in May <laughs> so I got to this a little bit too late but I um I really enjoyed rereading this I picked up on a few things this time because obviously I know things that happen in the third book and it was just a really nice experience rereading it I did listen along with the audiobook and had a great time doing it um forgot how much I actually do love Merrick because this is Merrick's book and yeah forgot how much I actually do love Merrick but yeah I really enjoyed my reread the I feel like some people get really confused with the like world building and the plot on that in Truth Witch but and I didn't but I can see why people do but I think this one is a lot easier to follow there is a lot more explanations I don't know if that's the right word but I think this is like a lot easier to get the plot and the world building than that in this book and yeah I just really like how it's basically building up to the third book which I'm very excited to read because that one's my favorite and I am anticipating that one getting a five star again because it got a five star the first time but this got a four star same as it did the first time I read it so loved it just as much then next up I'm gonna go for three books that I read throughout the month but it's a entire trilogy and that's the Magnus Chase trilogy. So we have Magnus Chase and the Sword of Summer, Magnus Chase and the Hammer of Thor and Magnus Chase and the Ship of the Dead. So this, e this series is by Rick Royden. This is set in the same world as Percy Jackson and Magnus Chase is actually the cousin of Annabeth from the Percy Jackson series. And all three of these books got four stars and I absolutely loved this so much. Can you turn that music off? Rude. 
and I just really, really enjoyed this. This has so many amazing characters and I just loved reading about Norse mythology because even though I'm not like a pro on any kind of mythology, Norse mythology is the one that I know most about. Mostly because of MCU, because Loki. But <laughs> I know Loki's not like that in real Norse mythology. He's more like he is in these, which is not a nice person. I did, however, the only issue, and it's a me issue, so I didn't rate the book down for it because I wasn't mad about this, but I did, no matter how the um deities were described <laughs> i pictured the mcu people so heimdall was idris elba loki was tom hiddleston thor was chris hemsworth i didn't picture them how they were described i pictured them as per the mcu actors and actresses but i actually quite enjoyed that so I was okay with it <laughs> but yeah i really enjoyed this there is a transgender fluid character in this and i absolutely love them so much they are my favorite character they are hilarious <laughs> and i just absolutely love it um i love everything about this trilogy it's just amazing the characters are amazing the story is amazing and it's very I like how Magnus breaks the fourth wall. I'm pretty sure Percy does this in the Percy Jackson series because obviously it's from his point of view and this is from Magnus's point of view. And I just really enjoy how they break the fourth wall and talk to the reader. It's it's brilliant. Next up we have Language of Thorns by Lee Bardugo. This came out as a four star as well. I had a lot of four stars this month. Um, so this is a collection of short stories and it's they are inspired by myth folklore and fairy tale and they are set in the Grisha verse I believe and I just really enjoyed the illustrations matching the story so as this each story goes on the illustrations expand until they're covering the entire border of the page and then you'll have, I don't think this one, this one's a non-spoilery ending. And then you have a full page, two page illustration at the end of the story. And then it moves on to the next story. And I just really loved these stories. They were all so lovely. There were a few that were a bit darker than others, which I was here for the darker ones. But yeah, um, I just really enjoyed these. And the illustrations were absolutely beautiful and just added that little something to the storytelling but they were really nice short story it was a really nice short story collection and i really enjoyed reading it next up we have obsidio by amy kaufman and jay christoph this is the final book in the illuminae files and i'm so glad i finally got to this so if you've read the first two books you'll know that the illuminae um follows two characters gemina follows two characters and then obsidio is basically wrapping up the story of all of the characters plus you get to meet a few more characters and it's just really gripping like I could not put this down I struggled when I had to and on the night I actually finished it I was like oh I'm gonna read like 10 more pages and then go to bed I was like nope I finished the final 110 pages and just finished it then and there because I physically couldn't put it down it was just so action-packed at the end and one of the things I love about this is the mixed media style and it's always fun to read I'm trying to find an example all right so this is an example the writing you have to actually move the page around to read it and there's actually a double page spread like this where you actually have to read it like this turning the page around in a spiral and it is just such a fun reading experience with these books and this um got five stars so yeah i am really happy with how this ended i thought it was a brilliant wrap up to a trilogy and yeah i, I just loved everything about it and i loved the characters both old and new and thought they just worked really well Next up, we have my reread of Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare. I reread this with Liv this month and it still ripped my heart out as much as it did the first two times I read it. However, I have realised 
the last chapter is where it really hits you and <laughs> each time I read it I start crying earlier on because I know what's coming and this time I just literally cried the entirety of the final chapter it was a mess I love this trilogy it's my favorite trilogy obviously this was a five star again I love this trilogy this is my favorite book in the Dark Artifices trilogy I don't think I don't think it could ever be beaten for me I absolutely adore it and yeah I'm excited to do my reread for Queen of Own Darkness even though that rips my heart out even more Next up we have Hunting Prince Dracula by Kerry Maniscalco. This I don't know why it took me so long to read because it is incredible. This was also a five star and it was so good. I've heard a lot of people say that this was not as good as the first book, Stalking Jack the Ripper. And I'm going to respectfully disagree. I think this is better than Stalking Jack the Ripper and it's made me want to hurry up and get to the other two books whereas Stalking Jack the Ripper I was like oh yeah I want to read the next book but mm, no rush however this one I'm like I want the third book have I put it on my June TBR no because I couldn't fit it on there but I want the third book but I really enjoyed this I really liked how Thomas and Audrey Rose work as a team and even if you take out the romance side of them, they still work as a team. And I love how the plot isn't based off of the romance. The romance is just part of the plot. I really like that because I'm not a massive fan of romance as a overall plot. I like there to be a actual plot with a side plot of romance, if that makes sense. And this is exactly that. And I absolutely love this. This was so creepy at times, like I was full on creeped out. I mean, vampires, werewolves are mentioned and yeah, it was really creepy. And the, the setting as well was really creepy as well as what was happening. So yeah, really enjoyed reading this and I'm very excited to get to the next books in the series. Next up, we have Kingdom of the Wicked by Kerry Maniscalco. Um, I had very high expectations for this book and I'm very happy to announce it did not disappoint. I did kind of pre predict this as being a five star. It did not hit that. It was only a four star. However, I absolutely loved this and I'm looking forward to the second book. The only thing for me that really brought it down was the ending. I wasn't a massive fan of the ending, which is why I was, I, I finished the book feeling a bit, hmm, not really sure. But overall, I really enjoyed this. One thing I love about this, it's set in Italy. And one thing I love about this is the descriptions of food. I am a massive foodie. I love my food and the descriptions of this food has made me want to just go and eat all of this food and try it and it just all sounds amazing and it just really helped set the scene because they own a restaurant in Italy and yeah it was just amazing and also I'm pretty sure I mean I already knew this but I'm pretty sure I need therapy because who was my favorite character that I fell in love with oh yeah the Prince of Hell Wrath but I mean, you would fall in love with him too, right? Just saying. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this and I'm looking forward to picking up the sequel when it comes out. Next up, we have The Unbroken by C.L. Clarke. And unfortunately, this was only a two star. I This was like one of my most anticipated books for the year. And I am honestly so gutted that I did not love this as much as I thought I would. Um, the premise is amazing. The characters I liked mostly. At the beginning I loved the characters but as the book went on I started to dislike the characters. There was a lot of miscommunication which I'm just so tired of quite frankly. And I just feel like the plot even though it was like an incredible sounding plot it wasn't executed properly 
there was like no intrigue for me whatsoever which i don't understand because so many people have loved and raved about this book and i just wasn't feeling it and the way it ends you're supposed to be wanting the next book and i just don't so i don't think this is going to be one that i continue the series unfortunately and like i just i'm so gutted about it because i really wanted to love this but i didn't so i don't want to dwell on that too much but yeah i just wasn't a massive fan next up we have kiss of death by rachel kane which is the eighth book in the morganville series this was a four star this <laughs> this is one of my favorites and i feel like i've said that about the last couple but i love this one in this one they actually leave morganville for a bit but yeah i really enjoyed the different settings and the action and the additional thing to the plot which caused more action and i'm being so vague because this is book nine and this book eight in a series but i really loved this book and yeah next up we have the witch's blood by Catherine and elizabeth core this is the final book in a series and this got a four star i really loved this book it tied in perfectly to the ending of the second book and one thing i loved about this book is even though it was pretty predictable on, on actually how it was going to end because of it being the end of a series however i had absolutely no idea how it was going to be executed and i thought oh, it was done so well i really enjoyed what went down in this book and I really loved the characters more so in this one even though even the characters you're supposed to hate they were written so well and I nearly said a name of the character then and I'm like no because that would be a massive spoiler because you're not supposed to hate them when you first meet them but yeah anyway I really loved this I loved the characters I loved the plot I was intrigued the entire way through and I just really loved how the series ended next up we have red white and royal blue by casey mcquiston this was so much better than i was expecting this was a four star for me and i was a little bit worried going into this because people have said that the british stereotypes are very what was the word cringy and incorrect and I'm just going to say, as someone who is not in the least part posh, but does know some posh people, the stereotypes are very much on point. Um, the only stereotype that isn't related to the royal family or posh people is the Brit's love for Jaffa Cakes. And that is a very fair stereotype because I don't know, I know one British person who doesn't like Jaffa Cakes. That's not a bad stereotype. Um, and all the other stereotypes aren't aimed at people like me. So, you know, and they're very accurate stereotypes. So, you know, um, I really loved this. It made me cry. <laughs> I didn't come here to cry, but this made me cry at multiple points. But this was just such a cute romance and I absolutely adored it and I love Alex and Henry so much. So much. Next up we have Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. This is a graphic novel that I have had on my shelves for ages and I finally got to it and I'm so glad I did. The artwork in this is just so cute and i really loved both um blackheart and namona blackheart is a villain namona is his sidekick and namona is also a shapeshifter and namona is brilliant i absolutely love her she is amazing and i like the friendship that they form throughout this this story and it was just so lovely and i can't remember if i mentioned but this was also a four star next up we have sea witch by sarah henning this was a four star as well for me and the more i look at this book the more i am so annoyed at myself because i have not read the blurb for this since i got the book and 
I also didn't reread this little tagline here. Before she took the Little Mermaid's voice, she gave up her own heart. This is a Little Mermaid retelling from Ursula's point of view. This is an Ursula origin story retelling and how I did not, one, figure it out sooner and two, figure it out sooner when it's right in front of me is just yeah we're not gonna go into that i really enjoyed this though i thought it was really well done and i liked seeing the um the background of basically why she becomes this sea witch and how she becomes this sea witch what causes her to go this direction and all the events that lead up to it and I thought it was just really well done and I really enjoyed it. I read it in like one sitting. Really enjoyed this really quick read. It's very short. It doesn't look it, but it's only like 350 pages. And I'm intrigued because of how this one ends. I'm very intrigued to see what the second book is because um, this is a duology. So yeah, really enjoyed this. Next up, we have Sight Witch by Susan Dennard. This is the novella. This is actually 2.5. I had not previously read this. This was my first time. I've read the other three books and I know you're supposed to read it before Blood Witch, but I've been over this before. I was too excited when I got Blood Witch and I just read it straight away before reading this. But I've read it now and this was a four star. I really enjoyed this. There was a very good insight. So you get to know about Ryba, which... I don't think you've met her in Wind Witch. I'm pretty sure you meet her. If you've not read this, you meet her in Blood Witch. But now I'm going to enjoy going into Blood Witch even more, having Ryber's backstory. And also Cullen is in this, which if you've read the first two books, you know who Cullen is. And yeah, it's just a little bit of an origin story for Ryber and Cullen. And yeah, I just really enjoyed this. This has a dual timeline as well. And the other timeline that follows someone else things figured out which is probably another reason I should have read this before Blood Witch the first time but oh well um but yeah full start really enjoyed this and it's made me even more excited to go into Blood Witch now and then finally we have Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman so I did actually put this on my June TBR but I just thought, do you know what? Screw it. I'm going to read it in May. Um, I wanted to read something little, um, mostly because I had hit 21 books and I knew that my record was 21 and I wanted to beat my record and I had time. So I squeezed this in and I'm really glad I did. This was a five star. It's five star. <laughs> and this was just so... I mean, it starts out really, really cute and it's like, oh, cute. And then it gets a bit more serious while still being cute. And if you've read Alice, Alice's work before, um, she's really good at talking about mental health issues and everything. She's just incredible. And this is just such a lovely addition. And this actually mentions the events of the little novella this winter. So when I got to that bit, I was like, that's this winter because I read that before I read this and yeah I just really enjoyed this and this was a five star no competition whatsoever so <laughs> they were the 22 books I completed in May I for most of May I did genuinely think Obsidio was going to be my favorite book then Hunting Prince Dracula come out as five star as well and they were the exact same rating on Core Pile, but I felt more for Obsidio so that was going to be my favourite book and then this did a thing. So this was my favourite book of May with Obsidio and Hunting Prince Dracula as very close seconds but this was my favourite book of May and... I'm very happy about that so yeah that was my May wrap up this is going to be a very long video and if you made it to the end thank you for watching I really appreciate it I hope you enjoyed this video if you've read any of these books let me know in the um, comments below what you thought of them and I 
hope you enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button hit the subscribe button and i will see you next time bye